Hello everyone! Today I'm going to show you a thorough build guide for my third iteration of Hank the Tank. Hank is one of my favorite vehicles in the game and is the culmination of six months of research and testing in electric vehicles. Hank is an 11 part vehicle that I made in collaboration with Efficient Demand. It has high speed and good climbing due to the central wheel that drives the motors on the axles. To begin building, we need to go and get some parts. First, let's get a couple electric motors in the middle of the wrist peninsula. Then, we're going to go down to the right leg depot in the depths to get the U-block. The U-block is that piece that you saw at the front of Hank. It's good protection, and it's also an attachment point separated from the Goron plate that's electrified, so that Link is not required to wear the Thunder Helm. You go up this elevator, and you can find the U-block right here. Save it to your auto-build. It's at this location. Then we need a Goron plate. You can find this in a couple locations. This is the one that I knew about first, up above the Colosseum. Then we need to go to the Sonopan Shrine. In here, we'll find a really large block. This block has a lot of snap points, which makes it good for gravity pressing, which is one technique that we will use today. Fuse that to a shield. Here are all the parts that we need. Beyond this, I'd say maybe a couple hundred Zonite. First, we're going to start in Terrytown. I'm going to show you how to do a gravity press in getting the large wheel into the Goron plate. You could also use stake nudging, or you could use item culling. This is one technique that I wanted to try out and I think is pretty reliable, so I wanted to show you. Attach four hover stones to the big block that you just brought on your shield, and then rebuild it and attach both of those together. So eight hover stones in total. Then we're going to grab a wooden board and attach it on the bottom. The bottom of the board is what's going to be in contact with the axle of the large wheel as we're pressing it. Activate it and hold it up and you should see that it will slowly fall to the ground. So we put our large wheel in place and we have our reference point on the left that I took directly from Hank. We're trying to replicate that left one. And here I'm going to align the board with the axle and let it fall down. And once it is at the bottom, I attach a fruit so it saves to my auto build and then I rebuild it with the parts and repeat the process until the axle is down at the spot that I want. I like to do this sort of two-dimensional alignment, line up the middle of the board and then go over and make sure the board is straight up and down. So now we'll repeat this process see that both the axle is going further down and the wheel starting to tip a little. The tipping is okay because at the end we'll fix it with one or two stake nudges. So I have pressed it down about seven times at this point. I'm going to do it one more time. And then now I'm going to correct the angle with the snap point on the stick. See how it bends towards straight up and down? Looks like I need to do it one more time. That looks good, let's rebuild it and compare. The one I just made is a little bit lower, but they're about the same. I'd say you could probably make another small adjustment with stake nudging to get it even closer. Make sure that the new wheel spins well. They both look good. Next, we're gonna move on to the axles. I'm gonna build the axles with item culling, 
which requires fuse entanglement, which is now possible with an easier method on all versions of the game. So take out a motor, and I'm going to be using item culling, so I'm going to fuse entangle this motor and go over to the culling spot next to the fence. You can also do this axle with gravity pressing, but it's going to be a little bit tricky. Here for item culling though, we attach the motor by looking at the notches on the motor and the large wheel, put it on a stake, and go press it flush against the fence. The weight of the motor brings the axle down though, so we need to put a stake in place to prop it up. That way our axle will be aligned. If you see the motor hardly move after you let it go with Ultra Hand, then your uh, prop stake is up high enough. But again, we need to make sure that it is flush against the fence and not at a weird angle. And that's looking pretty good. For item culling, now I'm going to run to this room and drop the fuse entangled shield. So the motor will disappear. Now we grab the large wheel and move it onto the other side of the motor to create the connection between the right wheel and the motor body. This axle is a little bit different than you may have seen previously. Previously you may have seen the two wheels are connected and then you attach a motor to one of the wheels. And I actually found that if you connect the wheels separately to the motor body and not each other, it goes a little bit faster. Um, Hank is able to go from about 25 to 27 meters per second at neutral. Anyway, once you've cold, you attach a fruit, auto build it, make sure that it's aligned the next step, we're going to fuse and tangle a large wheel instead of the motor. Make sure you grab the large wheel when you're attaching it to the axle. You always want to grab the fuse and tangled item when making an attachment for culling. We're going to put the axle up against the fence again, prop the motor up, and now we're going to go cull the left wheel. That attachment breaking was the stake on the bottom, not the connection between the wheel and the motor. And that's because I grabbed the stake when attaching it and not the wheel. Move the motor slightly left, attach something to save it. Now we will auto build it and make sure that the axle is aligned. You want to watch the shadow on the ground and make sure that wheels aren't moving forward and back as you spin it. And we see it's pretty good. Next, we're going to take our auto-built history axles and press wheel into the Goron plate up to the water temple. I like to go to the water temple because it's in low gravity, so when you rebuild things with auto build, you don't get as much misalignment due to gravity. Put your wheel and Goron plate onto a stake, attach a stabilizer on the side of the wheel, and then use the snap point on the bottom or top of the stabilizer to pull the wheel tire down so that the middle motor of the wheel is up against the edge. You want to pull this down as far as possible. Now we're going to grab one of the axles and we want to attach to the Goron plate where the motor axle is about halfway on and off of the Goron plate, if you can see that there by the fruit. Sometimes the middle wheel will break off of the stake so you just have to redo that press down and then attach the other axle around the same area, halfway on and off the Goron plate. Sometimes you may need to attach something like an apple to the edge of the Goron plate to stop it from wanting to attach to a snap point. Once you've got a good press, you'll see that the center tire has that little motor power symbol down near the edge. You want that middle wheel to avoid the notches of the motor body because that will slow down the rotation of the middle wheel. And next we are going to stake nudge a control stick down a little bit from the middle of a U-block. The reason for doing this is because the U-block will uh, stop enemies from seeing Link while his head and torso are covered, 
and they don't care about his feet. So we can nudge the control stick down a little bit so his feet stick out. I also like to put a little forward um, angle on the control stick because that helps with a little bit steeper hills while you're climbing. Now that we've got the control stick nudged down and a little bit forward, just go ahead and test it out. See that Link's head and torso are fully covered by it, which they look good here. Now, to attach to the Goron plate is a little tricky. One method I figured out to make it reliable is to attach two carts like this um, as sort of a scaffolding while you're attaching the U-block. Now we're gonna bring the U-block back. And you wanna attach it about halfway up and down over that uh, Goron plate. We want the U-block in the middle of the vehicle. Then you can get rid of the carts. Make sure it looks good. Hank is done now, once you put a shock emitter on, although he doesn't actually need a shock emitter. Um, the friction of this middle wheel is good enough that you can get by without any electricity. But um, I'd say just grab your favorite turret and put a star fragment up on top on the front and put your turret on top of it. The reason that we've put the control stick and the turret and everything in the front is because loading the front of a land vehicle with mass helps with a little bit of handling it helps with climbing too because wheels and axles are better at pushing weight up a hill so you want to put all that weight in the front like you see me doing here i'm putting the uh, shock emitter up near the front near the u-block but because the control stick isn't directly touching an electrified part link doesn't need a thunder helm unless it rains of course you can see that once you grab the control stick, Hank immediately starts to take off. Has really high torque, so does wheelies. But let's try a drop test out. It's especially treacherous at Lanayru because of all these sky islands, but we managed to make it through. Usually some part of the turret breaks off. And it was great, nothing broke off. Mm, looks like we have to go down the cliff. Ah, <laughs> there something broke. Great. This, uh, Conga turret that I have has five beam emitters on it, so it's actually quite a bit heavier than it appears. Anyway, that's how you build Hank the Tank. Save it to your favorites. I use it all the time, and even with a heavy turret on the front that weighs 900 mass units, it is able to climb up steep hills like this. Thanks for watching everyone.